This project is a pleated cover for an ottoman. You can use this technique to cover virtually any square or rectangular object. It's simply a top with sides. This is the ottoman I am covering. It's old and pretty ugly, but it's a decent footstool and my cat likes to sit on it. Yes, I literally mean sit. He sits like people. Here's my side and it's, like I said, three yards long. Um, I didn't cut the end off. This is where I measured the 278 that I thought it should be. But I went ahead and left it like this and we'll see how this turns out just in case anything went wrong in my measurements. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and take a look at the construction and start folding these pleats out on the fabric. So we'll go ahead and start here on this piece. So we have our little one centimeter seam allowance to start. And we can just mark it with a pencil. So about there, that's our seam allowance line. And now our first item is a pleat depth of six. So we'll mark that off here. And now we need to go the length of the top piece, which is 45. And, and now we get to form our first corner. Uh, we've got six centimeters coming in here and six coming back, six this direction and six this direction. So I'm just going to mark off the four series of six here and now we can go ahead and fold this up. So this is an outside fold, the second is an in and they meet in the middle like that. And there's our first corner. There's our second pleat. So if you recall all we had was the seam allowance and the inside fold. So there's the beginning. And then it just goes right here next to this one. And then there's the tails. So if I had cut it where I thought I was supposed to cut it, it would have been fine. It's a little bit off, but when you're dealing with measuring down three yards, this happens sometimes. So I can just cut it at the pin or cut it right so it's even with this one. And that's going to be part of that back seam allowance. Here is the sides all clipped onto the ottoman and I could tell you that it went wonderfully the first time. Fact is it didn't. When I put it on it was baggy. Uh, the top is really broken down so I took the whole thing apart and tightened up. Instead of 45 I did 44 on the sides and it tightened it up nicely. So this is why you do test fits because things like this happen. You'll see that I went ahead and turned up my five centimeter hem allowance and pinned it, pressed it and pinned it. Otherwise the fabric was laying down here on the table and it would be really difficult for me to see how well the corners formed. So go ahead and press up your hem allowance before you do your little test fit. I would suggest at this point that you go ahead and put the hem in permanently so you don't have to fuss with that and then go ahead and sew the sides to the top. We'll do that next. And now what we want to do before we sew that top on is to press in these pleats. So you'll want to lay them out and use whatever you have. You can make a gauge the depth that you've got on your pleats. You can use one of these types of sewing gauges. You can just use a ruler.
maybe put a piece of tape on there to mark where it should be and then measure all the way down so that these are completely even and then take it over to the ironing board and press it really really well. Now you might want to use water to spritz it. You might even want to use starch because you want to get these edges in as crisp as possible. If you have fabric that's not really cooperating very well and you want knife edges on these, you can choose to sew very, very close to that crease that you press in. And you'll probably want to use a smaller stitch when you do that. And that way they'll never come out. Even when you wash, then when you go to iron it again, it'll be really easy. So here's my completed pleats and you'll see I decided to sew the edge so that it would stay in place after washing and it'll be much easier to press it. After you're done with your pleat edges then go ahead and baste the top of each pleat set. Now we have a pleat in each hand on the final corner so that one we've already pinned down. Now we just need to do this one. And it's going to have this little flap hanging over. And that flap will need to turn the corner and be on the other side. Like that. So there's that back flap on that side, and here's the other flap on the other side. They meet up there. So there's that corner. Now that the top is all pinned into place, I would suggest that you baste this first and then go ahead and take it over and make sure it fits whatever your item is and it looks good before you do that final seam. Here's my completed ottoman cover and you can see that it came together pretty nicely. Here's what the corners look like. Now the fabric underneath is really kind of sticky so this doesn't drape as nice as it could but it certainly meets my purpose. I'll show you this one corner here this is where they meet up and this is what I was talking about in the beginning where if you wanted to you could have seamed those two edges together and then it would be completely closed but in this case I think this is just fine I'm just gonna leave it of course with any project the final outcome is determined by the user of the item that you've made so here we have Maggie and Midnight checking out the construction techniques of the Ottoman cover and here is Midnight. He's given his final approval. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch our videos. Please subscribe and you'll know what we do. <laughs> That's the content. And hit the like button to encourage us to make more. <laughs> <laughs> if you have ideas for future videos, please leave us a message in the comment section. A message? <laughs> Take care. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>